So Bajaj has made a huge investment, 750 crores, into a new EV manufacturing facility in Pune. Spread across six and a half acres of land, the five lakh annual capacity two-wheeler production plant is aimed at catering to both domestic and export markets. Rajiv Bajaj had to say a lot about the Chetak and of course he had to take a dig at the EV startups. What's new, right? Hello viewers and welcome to the Plugin India channel. This is a new episode of Industry Watch. The first thing Rajiv says is that Chetak has attracted attention globally. Dealers in Latin America, Europe and other locations are interested. Bajaj sold around 9,000 units in the last financial year. So demand is not a problem. He says supply chains are not robust enough and thus production seems to be the real issue for Bajaj. Having said that, I must emphasize that uh... Uh, scaling up is not our number one priority at this stage. Uh, we are all uh, uh, too well aware that we are dealing with a completely new animal uh, and we have to get uh, the technology and the quality and the customer experience mm -hmm. absolutely right. So it's about R&D, it's about the supply chain mm -hmm. and it's also about what happens at the dealership where the rubber meets the road. So we are not in a tearing hurry to make millions of Chetaks. I respect his statement on the need to focus on R&D and customer experience. Of course, we want good, well-designed, robust routers on the road and safe ones too. That kind of thinking comes from deep experience and focus on quality, which Bajaj is known for. He also says that scaling is not a priority now and he plans to keep Chetak numbers low. News news. I can applaud him or I can be cynical here. I can applaud him for taking a measured approach towards EVs as this new technology and it's better to go slow, master the technology and then scale up in a large manner. Why scale up like Ola Electric and let customers face issues with software, build quality, etc. On the other hand, I can also be cynical of this move. Essentially, Bajaj are artificially keeping Chetak production numbers low thus raising less awareness of EVs so that he can delay the EV movement, which in turn ensures that his ICE motorcycle business is not affected. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below what you feel are the real motives behind Rajiv Bajaj keeping EV production low. The Chetak in its, um, let's say, upgraded avatar with our own in-house system. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, previously we had uh, some parts that were coming from suppliers, mm -hmm. but now we have uh, our own in-house system, 100% um, developed by us, made by us. Uh, in this, that is already in the marketplace. I think last couple of months. Mm -hmm. The next, well, there will definitely be new Chetaks next year. Mm -hmm. uh, whether one or more, I don't know right now. Okay, so guys, back in 2020, when we visited the Chetak Experience Center at FC Road in Pune, we were told that the swing arm motor and the battery pack were imported from Bosch. It looks like Chetak's being delivered this year will have a made in India battery pack, which is fantastic news. From our sources, we got to know that the battery pack is being made by Varok, a Bajaj family company that supplies automotive components. We are still not sure about the motor and the controller, but Bajaj must have localized them too. And of course, with all this localization, the Chetak now qualifies for the Fame 2 subsidy. The X showroom price of the Chetak is set at a whopping 1,94,061 rupees. Fame 2 subsidy of rupees 43,500. In states like Maharashtra, you get a state subsidy of 10,000 rupees more. So the on-road price is 1,47,064 rupees, which is not cheap. The price definitely seems inflated in our opinion. The battery size is small, the range offered is average, the software features are virtually non-existent, no maps, no over-the-air updates, no software updates at all, no cool features like cruise control. Essentially, when you buy a Chetak, you are stuck with the same features and you won't get a true software driven EV experience like what we are seeing with the Aether 450X and the Ola S1 Pro. Then our esteemed CNBC journalist gets into 9 or 10 cases of EV fires that have happened from mid 2021. I don't think um, 
companies go out there consciously to make a defective product mm -hmm. you know and frankly my belief is there are only two kinds of electric vehicles out there those that have caught fire and those that perhaps will catch fire mm -hmm. you know so you know tomorrow a chita could catch fire mm -hmm. we have to uh, accept that we are so f uh, so much at the beginning of the learning curve mm -hmm. that we really don't know what we don't know yep chetak uses nmc cells too and we could see a chetak catching fire you never know when thermal runaway happens in a pack for whatever reasons i like how rajiv responded in a very candid manner seemed humble and did not mock the fires that are happening unlike what you see with petrol head auto journalists on twitter from our observations every ev fire is party time for petrol head auto journalists mr bajaj blames the regulatory agencies here Fortunately, you call them startups. Uh, I call them upstarts. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these uh, uh, folks who, who really couldn't find anything better to do, mm -hmm. uh, frankly, uh, are uh, tempted by these huge subsidies and incentives that are there in the marketplace. Um, many of these companies I know or know of. Uh, I know of the people uh, behind these companies, and uh, and I can tell you, I mean, these are companies with zero R and D uh, versus somebody like us that has 1,400 people working here, uh, including very soon about 500 on EV alone. Um, really, no manufacturing facilities to speak about, no real supply chain, and no control um, and you know uh, visibility line of sight into that supply chain. um and uh, all they do is uh, i'm sorry to say import some junk out of somewhere mm -hmm. that is not really been validated for this marketplace mm -hmm. and put it out there mm -hmm. and unfortunately the regulatory environment for example under the guise of low speed vehicles mm -hmm. etc is such uh, that it permits them to do so right. so you know um, when the flower doesn't bloom you you fix the environment not the flower so mr bajaj calls these companies upstarts we call them ev traders EV traders or upstarts as you would like to call them are companies they import entire scooters or vehicles from china they then remove these chinese components from the scooters and add components from indian vendors hero electric okinawa pure ev ampere are all big names who do this the entire model of removing components and trying to shoehorn indian components in the name of localization is disgusting There is virtually no integrated vehicle design or development happening. It is amazing that these companies have got fame through subsidies and are certified. Uh, obviously, a lot of these products were never meant to operate at these temperatures uh, or in these traffic conditions. And if they will be randomly imported and put out there, uh, I mean, surely when uh, uh, companies are getting approval, when they are getting the fame benefit, mm -hmm. and therefore they are uh, obviously getting approval for their product. I mean, how can you approve facilities that are not backed by any R and D, any manufacturing, virtually no testing? You know, I I just don't understand. So, Mr. Bajaj is just flabbergasted that EV traders get ARI and ICAT certification, and many also get the fame subsidy. The question is, should ARI, ICAT stop certifying products that are imported and localized? and only offer certification to products that are made in india from the ground up that kind of regulation may enhance the quality of evs in india but too much regulation can lead to stifling of the industry i don't think the uh, answer really lies in a lot of inspection and audit and all we don't want to go back to the inspector raj mm -hmm. you know we want to be in the intellectual raj so Uh, so we need to frame uh, the right policies for that and of course um, if it is uh, found or felt that some people for example i have heard of companies that submit one battery for testing and actually use a different specification in actual production mm -hmm. you know if somebody is uh, just uh, flouting the norms like that mm -hmm. then there must be very very serious consequences for that mm -hmm. um, uh, so we have to attack this bottom up and top down we may look down upon ev traders but these traders are taking evs to small towns creating self employment opportunities for dealers and service technicians they are making evs accessible to many people so they should not be shut down or hated we do know that the ministry of road transport and highways morth has completed their investigation into the fires and have found defective cells issues with bmss and reports have been submitted to the ev manufacturers also there are talks to create more stringent guidelines about cells and bmss 
in the coming future. In my opinion, all of this is positive. There should be one standard for cell quality and one world-class BMS schematic made especially for scooters that can work with all scooter brands. This can help these EV traders do better. Instead of relying on some random Chinese off-the-shelf BMS or some low-quality cells, the time has come for the government to help these traders. What more do you guys think can be done to help out our EV traders? Then our esteemed CNBC journalist asked Mr. Bajaj if these fire incidents will hurt EV sales. Uh, the, the recent fires, has the customer now become more cautious when it comes to uh, looking or exploring electric vehicles as an, as an option? Has this dented demand for EVs? It is hard to say. Uh, well, clearly the consumer is uh, uh, definitely very aware of this. Uh, how anxious they are is hard to say. Uh, but, uh, you know, the OPEX is very compelling uh, with fuel prices being what they are right now and with the incentives on EVs being as they are. I suspect that uh, since there is such a gap between supply and demand, maybe even if a bit of demand falls off uh, due to this, uh, we will not be able to sense it right now because there's still enough people there in the pipeline. I mean, we ourselves are receiving more bookings every month mm -hmm. uh, than the Chetaks we are uh, able to assemble and ship out. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, order book keeps building and I suspect this will continue for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully such incidents will be fewer and far in between. So don't you think that was a reasonable answer by Mr. Bajaj? EV's demand will continue. In India, most people care about money saving and EVs offer that. And people are not dumb. Many people realize that electric vehicles are not known to catch on fire at a higher rate than petrol vehicles. But EV fires do get more attention in the media. Despite some 80 odd Tesla fires since 2012, they are statistically safer in the real world with fewer accidents per million miles and fewer fatalities per, as per the data. The journalist tried his best to get a negative response, but he had to change the topic soon. Well done, Mr. Bajaj. Are you more concerned about electric vehicle failures, battery fires with the coming monsoon? Wow, looking at that, I guess the journalist has been told not to let off the fire topic. And on and on and on. Uh, no, the monsoon should actually make it uh, better, I would suppose. Uh, the peak summer is what was uh, <coughs> really of concern. And that has led to some of the incidents that, that have occurred. Well, take that CNBC auto journalist. We have seen EV demand increasing. Now it's in the range of 33,000, 35,000 per month. Uh, despite these fires, we've seen the likes of Okinawa, Ola, retailing around 9,000, 9,500 vehicles. Uh, is it time for Bajaj Auto to uh, ramp up now, ramp up uh, as soon as possible? Even when talking about the fantastic growth of EV sales, this guy keeps mentioning the fires. Surely he is told to do that. Anyway. Mr. Rajiv Bajaj responded by saying he is not interested in scaling up right now. They will gradually increase production and won't be competing with the numbers of Ola or Okinawa who are the leaders at this point. Anyway, what have we learned? First, there won't be any updates to the Chetak in 2022. Second, there may be upgrades like a better battery pack enhanced range in 2023. Third, there won't be any electric motorcycles in Bajaj's portfolio. Fourth, Bajaj only expects 10% of their portfolio to be EVs by mid-2024. And fifth, in other words, Bajaj wants to ensure that 90% of the vehicles they sell will be oil-guzzling, air-polluting, noisy ice motorcycles. I want to highlight one more point. This is about the journalist at CNBC TV18. This is the same guy who interviewed Mr. Varun Dubey of Ola Electric back in Jan this year and I will link both the interviews for you to watch. Just observe how the tone of this journalist was aggressive when he was interviewing the Ola executive. He always interrupted Varun and never allowed his guest to finish answering and the entire interview felt like a session to spread EV negativity. That gets reflected in Van only once customers get permanent plates. Mm. Also, so once customers get permanent place and that process takes a month. Okay. There is a four week gap between temporary place to permanent place. All right. I, we have started deliveries from 15th of December only. That's another right? question that and I want to ask you. it's not like everything is on 15th of December. Yeah. Let me explain. But if you're asking me a question, allow me to explain. Sure, sure. Temporary plates do not reflect in Vahan. But out Since August, if they've been saying that you are, they'll get a range of 181 kilometers. They'll get 27 features like cruise control, halo hold, proximity lock. 
uh, etc company claims no no there is not a fair amount of, i'm contextualizing that i'm giving you the data right you are accusing me of not giving the data i'm giving the data please listen hmm. the average industry variation is 30 to 40% and look at the difference here he is calm more of almost afraid of rajiv no hard questions were asked to mr rajiv bajaj only soft balls were thrown and we are hoping that demand will come in from all over the world for chetak right uh, you had said one chetak per year an electric three wheeler uh, in this fiscal when can we expect these products and will it be limited to these two new ev offerings or will there be more here we have bajaj a company that has more than 15000 crores in the bank and why are they not willing to work on offering even a single electric motorcycle to indian consumers can mr bajaj explain the inflated price of the chetak can mr bajaj explain how base ex showroom price was changed multiple times to ensure that the fame to subsidy and state subsidy is not passed on to the customer many chetak owners have got a notification on their mobile app that it won't be supported anymore check it out so when you say chetak is the world's best ev2 wheeler how about explaining the absolute disregard for software by abandoning your app do you even understand what an ev is all about or understand how important software is none of the above questions were asked to mr rajiv bajaj unfortunately our so called auto journalists are not journalists anymore they are just stenographers or pr for the big ice companies we all know who is greasing their palms here this is the sad reality of journalism in india but what is not ev community and ev owners these petrol head journalists or paid media agents cannot hide their agenda anymore people can see through their games and the paid anti ev agenda their time is over please leave a like if this video was remotely entertaining or educational i will see you in the next video of industry watch take care